So I'm Todd Myers. I'm the environmental director of the Washington Policy Center. As you can see, uh, the smoke from the forest fires is back. I'm out at the farm where my bees are, and you can see the smoke in the sky. Um, most of the smoke has come from uh, Oregon forest fires with some wildland fires, grass fires, other things like that. The air quality index, usually which is about uh, 10, which is very low and very good air quality, um, is about 180 right now because of all the smoke in the air. That's sort of Beijing level bad um, that we're seeing right now. And people are concerned that we're seeing this every year. And a lot of people are pointing the finger at climate change because of this. But if you actually look at the data, we haven't seen that uh, big a difference in temperatures um, over the last even 20 years that would cause um, these sorts of forest fires. More likely, um, it is a result of poor forest management, unhealthy forests, um, too many trees uh, competing for too little light, too little moisture, and then what happens is, is that they either die or infect insects have an opportunity to um, kill the trees, and then they're just standing matchsticks. And so what turned from a sort of natural repetition of fire uh, into catastrophic fire, because instead of fire-resistant trees um, that are big um, with lots of space, now you have lots of um, very dry trees all together. So we need to do something uh, about that. And if you're worried about um, smoke and forest fires, doing everything that we could do for climate change would make no difference, even by the year 2100. Temperatures are going to continue to go up, even if we could meet all of the most strict targets on reducing CO2 emissions, simply because that's the way uh, it works. And that's what all the models show is, is that it wouldn't, even if the United States as a whole wouldn't make a difference uh, of about a fraction of a degree. The only thing we can really do in the near term to reduce forest fires, to reduce smoky days like this, is to manage our forests better. It's a very expensive proposition and, and there's a widespread recognition uh, um, across the political spectrum and among scientists that we need to do that. The question is how to pay for it. Some people want to raise taxes. My opinion is, is that we need to do what we did in Washington State to uh, raise money using commercial harvests um, and then use some of that money to fix forests. That's how we fixed um, for uh, fish culverts in Washington State. There were a lot of fish culverts that blocked habitat. And what we would do is we would harvest, take some of the money, fix the culvert or remove the culvert and open up miles of habitat. We can do that same thing um, as a way to start fixing the forests um, and the unhealthy situation that we have. That's the way uh, tribes um, in Washington State are doing it. They use the commercial forests, uh, our commercial harvests to fund some of those projects. And we really ought to take their lead. It's an opportunity waiting for the legislature or Congress to provide funding. Uh, well, you see the results. Uh, we have lots of smoke in the air. We're gonna to continue to have forest fires, despite the fact that we've recognized for decades that we need to do something different. So that's where we really need to put our emphasis and constantly talking about climate change, um, but forgetting to mention the need to do something about our forests uh, is not just uh, uh, bad politics. Uh, it may actually be good politics, unfortunately, but it's bad science and it's bad for the environment.